To open the next session, please welcome Dr. Jonas Francisco Santiago, Chair of the Nuclear Medicine and Pet Center at St. Luke's Medical Center, Global City, and recipient of the Distinguished Filipino Nuclear Medicine Physician Award by the Philippine Society of Nuclear Medicine. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The next lecture is entitled New Modalities in Nuclear Imaging. Our distinguished speaker is Professor Ki Seung Henry Baum, Chairman of the Asian Regional Cooperative Council for Nuclear Medicine. He is a professor of nuclear medicine at the Chonam National University Medical School and Hospital in Guangzhou, Korea. Deputy Director and General Director of CNU Hua Soon Hospital, President of the Korean Society of Nuclear Medicine, Chairman of ARCCNM, and President of the Asia Oceania Federation of Nuclear Medicine and Biology. I would also add, like to add that he is also the, an avid supporter of the local nuclear medicine community, the Philippine Society of Nuclear Medicine. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Ki Seung Henry Bong. Hello, very nice to meet you. I'm Professor Henry Baum, a nuclear medicine physician in South Korea, chairman of the Asian Regional Corporate Council for Nuclear Medicine. It's my great honor and pleasure to introduce new modalities of nuclear imaging and oncology. I deeply appreciate the organizers to invite me to present in the Asia Oncology Society Virtual Congress 2020. I have no conflict of interest. If I select a single word related to the principle of nuclear imaging, I may say it's tracing. We use radioactive tracers to trace very small molecules to see biochemical processes in living cells of the body. For example, we want to trace the movement of glucose in living body, such as cancer cells. Glucose is an energy source of most cancer cells. Many cancer cells actively produce glucose transporter in the cell membrane to catch glucose and produce energy. We can detect cancer cells if we can trace glucose. Nuclear imaging uses radio tracer or radioactive tracer to show movement of small molecules such as glucose in the living cells. To make radio tracer, we replace one or more atoms by radionuclide and detect the radiation coming from the radionuclide. We call this detection process radio tracing. In other words, the principle of nuclear imaging is radio tracing. This is the most popular radio tracer, a radioactive glucose. We replace hydroxyl group of the glucose by a radionuclide fluorine 18 or F18. We call this new molecule F18 fluorodeoxyglucose or FDG. We use it to detect cancer cells or diagnose cancer. If we inject FDG, cancer cells eat FDG as they eat glucose. Actually, glucose and FDG compete to come into the cell through the glucose transporter. When FDG comes into the cell, it does not produce energy but stay inside the cell and emits radiation. We can detect the radiation by using imaging machine, positron emission tomography, or a PET. The advantage of nuclear imaging over other imaging modalities such as radiograph, CT, or ultrasound is that we can characterize the tissues in the living body. In other words, we do molecular characterization by nuclear imaging. We do not say how big it is, rather we say how fast it grows or how actively it metabolizes. 
The following several slides I got from KHAT Manila, Philippines. I appreciate their support. Chat City shows a large mess in the right lower lung, as shown by a yellow arrow. Active tumor cells are located in the medial part of the tumor, as shown by a red arrow in the right image of PET. This metabolically active site is the target of biopsy. A metastatic hyalur lymph node is also shown by a blue arrow. We can make a hybrid image by combining CT and PET. We call this hybrid image PET-CT. PET-CT shows both anatomical and functional images. It is easier to understand where is the burning lesion and where is the ruins of fire. Usually, genetic changes start first in the carcinogenesis, followed by biochemical changes and morphologic changes. PET or nuclear images represent biochemical changes while CT or ultrasound represent morphologic changes. Both anatomic and molecular characterization of tumor is possible by hybrid imaging such as PET-CT. This is a summary of PET-CT applications in oncology. PET-CT can be used effectively for diagnosis. It, it can characterize a tumor as benign or malignant. In the case of malignancy of unknown primary, PET-CT can survey whole body and detects the primary lesion. PET-CT can be used for staging, especially for M-staging by detection of occult metastasis. Other applications of PET-CT include restaging, response evaluation, surveillance, and radiation therapy planning. F18 fluorodeoxyglucose or FDG is currently most widely using radio tracer. PET-CT is superior to conventional imaging and PET or CT alone for staging and restaging of most cancers. It shows high staging accuracy in the various cancers such as lung cancer, breast cancer, esophageal cancer, colorectal cancer, lymphoma, melanoma, cervical cancer, head and neck cancer, bone and soft tissue sarcomas, and myeloma as you see in this slide. Now let me show you some examples of staging by FDG PET-CT in lung cancer in the following slides. It is not uncommon to find a small nodule in the lung. It is not easy to say whether this small nodule is cancer or not. If a nodule shows a positive uptake, the possibility of cancer is very high. We need a histologic confirmation by biopsy. If there is no uptake in the nodule, we can observe and follow up. It is a simple strategy. If there is positive uptake, do biopsy. No uptake, follow up. The next application is staging of cancer. Let me give you some examples of lung cancer staging. This patient is a small cancer in the right lung. 
Luckily, there is no regional or distant metastasis. The stages T1b, N0, M0, and stage 1a2, according to the recent AJCC cancer staging, the 8th edition. This patient has a lung cancer in the right lower lung. The tumor spread to hyla and subcranial lymph nodes. Therefore, the stage is T2A, N2, M0, stage 3A. A lung cancer in the right lower lung spreads to hyla, mediastinal, and to the contralateral supraclavicular lymph nodes. The stage becomes T2A, N3, M0, stage 3B. FDG PSAT is very effective in M staging. We have subgroups of M stages and stage 4. If lung cancer spreads to pleura, making malignant pleura effusion, it becomes M1A and stage 4A. If lung cancer spreads to the contralateral lung, making separate tumor nodule, it becomes M1A and stage 4A. If there is only one extrathoracic metastasis, it is M1B. But if there are multiple extrathoracic metastases, like this patient, the stage becomes M1C and stage 4B. This patient shows multiple metastatic lesions in the whole body, including liver, adrenal gland, and pelvic bones. Many tumors show variable FDG avidity. Actually, not all cancers will light up on PET. This slide shows examples of non-FDG avid cancers, well-differentiated tumors, bronchoalveolar lung cancer, mucinous cancer of stomach, hepatocellular carcinoma, well-differentiated neuroendocrine tumors, and some lobular breast carcinoma do not uptake FDG. This slide summarizes diagnostic accuracy of breast, lung, head and neck, and colon cancers by sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, negative predictive value, and accuracy. Usually, sensitivity is higher than specificity, and PPV higher than NPV, except for lung nodule characterization. What do the guidelines say for the application of PCT to different cancers? This is NCCN guideline for invasive breast cancer. FDG PET-CT is optional recommended for preoperative workup. If FDG PET-CT is performed and clearly indicates bone metastasis on both the PET and CT component, bone scan or sodium fluoride PET-CT may not be needed. FDG PET-CT can be performed at the same time as diagnostic CT. The use of PET or PET CT is not indicated in the staging of clinical stage 1, 2, or upper of stage 3 breast cancer. FDG PET CT is most helpful in situations where standard studies are equivocal or suspicious, especially in the setting of 
locally advanced or metastatic disease. FTG PET-CT may also be helpful in identifying unsuspected regional nodal disease and radistant metastasis in locally advanced breast cancer when used in addition to standard staging studies. FTG PET is recommended for characterization of incidental finding of nodule suspicion for lung cancer. FTG PET-CT is recommended for the pre-treatment evaluation of non-small cell lung cancer. For colon cancer, FTG PET-CT is not routinely indicated. NCCN guideline recommends to consider PET-CT skull base to mid-thigh in potentially surgically curable M1 disease in selected cases. Whole body PET-CT is very helpful in the management of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Bone marrow biopsy may not be needed if PET-CT scan is negative unless finding of another lymphoma subtype is important for treatment decision. FDG PET-CT is also essential in the diagnostic workup of Hodgkin lymphoma. PET or PET is an acronym of Pagetron Emission Tomography, but it also has a nickname of Pretty Expanding Technology. The map in the right upper corner shows distribution of PET-CT centers in Korea. I can say PET-CT is available in any cities of South Korea. The usage of PET-CT grew exponentially because of its usefulness the management of cancer patients. KHealth in Manila, Philippines kindly provided this information to me. This is the availability and usage of PET-CT in the United States and Philippines. There are 2,400 PET-CT units in U.S. as of February 2019. The number of clinical PET and PET-CT scans performed in 2018 was estimated at 2,086 million. In the Philippines, there are seven PET-CT sites only in Metro Manila. Total number of PET-CT scans from 2016 to 19 was 6,327. In average, 1845 scans per month. We may say that PET-CT is underutilized in many developing countries. Possible reasons are limited availability, limited accessibility, perceived high cost, and lack of funding sources or any form of reimbursement or subsidy. Nuclear medicine community is actively working to solve these problems. As I presented it so far, FDG PET-CT is the hottest nuclear imaging modality in oncology. But we have other new imaging modalities such as PET-MRI and SPEC-CT. Let me briefly summarize the technical development of these new modalities. Currently, more than 6,000 PET-CT and 250 PET-MRI scanners are operational worldwide, and F18-FDG is the tracer of choice. Image resolution of current PET-CT or PET-MRI is 3 mm. However, 
Even smaller lesions can be detected if trace uptake is high. Current technology includes time of flight imaging, digital photomultiplier tube, and softwares for correction and reconstruction. Future technical development of PET CT and PET MRI include faster detectors, more robust photomultiplier tubes, higher resolution, and new softwares. PET MRI is more recently developed technology than PET CT. This paper compares PET MRI and PET CT. It's recently published on Journal of Nuclear Medicine by a German group. PET MRI gives additional information than PET CT in 26.3%, additional malignant findings in 5%, change of TNM stage in 3%. PET MRI does not detect lesions than PET CT in 3%, missed malignant lesions in 1.2%. Radiation dose of PET MRI is around 3.6 mSv, while radiation dose of PET CT is 17.6 uh, mSv. PET MRI gives additional information in malignant bone disease, lung cancer, prostate cancer, gynecologic or breast cancer, gastrointestinal or neuroendocrine tumor, and malignant melanoma. Among malignancy, PET MRI gives additional information in 53 patients, including malignant bone disease, lung cancer, prostate cancer, gastrointestinal, or neuroendocrine tumor. PET MRI changes TNM stage in 3%, especially in prostate cancer and gastrointestinal or neuroendocrine tumor. PET MRI missed malignant lesions than PET CT in 1.2%, which include small lung nodule, lymph node metastasis, bone metastasis, and lesion in hypopharynx. This slide shows an intermediate lesion in PET CT classified by PET MRI. 53-year-old male patient suffering from lung cancer. Contrast in NCCT A, PET B, and fused FDG PET CT images C are displayed in comparison to contrast in NCT1 MRI D, PET and fused F18 PET MRI images F. In CT, the hyperdense Subcentimeter liver lesion in segment 7 is suspicious of a transient hepatic attenuation difference or a small hemangioma. As malignancy cannot be excluded, it needs further investigation. In PET MRI, the lesion is clearly classified as metastasis due to contrast enhancement and trace uptake due to a later acquisition time point. Follow-up CT confirmed the diagnosis after 78 days. This slide shows a missed finding by PET MRI. A 77-year-old female patient suffering from ovarian carcinoma. A small lung metastasis in right upper lobe that is missed by MRI as well as in PET, in PET MRI and PET CT due to its small size, is clearly visible in CT. Follow-up CT confirmed malignancy after 78 days. Now we are facing a surge of new radio traces for PET CT or PET MRI imaging studies. These are only some examples among them. 
PSMA is very good for prostate cancer. It can be labeled with gallium-68 or F18. FAP is the second FDG. It can be labeled with gallium-68 or F18. FLT is a thymidine and goes to actively proliferating tumors. Sodium fluoride is a bone scan agent. Acetate goes to many cancers, especially helpful for hepatocellular carcinoma. Methionine goes to brain tumor and various monoclonal antibodies such as trastuzumab can be labeled with uh, zirconium-89. Finally, but not the least, let me briefly introduce SPEC-CT. SPEC-CT is more recently appeared as compared to PET-CT. Current technologies for SPEC-CT include quantitative applications using CZT detector softwares for correction and reconstruction. As SPEC-CT is recently introduced, we expect to have further development of various technologies for more rapid and more quantitative imaging. This is an example of spec CT in a thyroid cancer patient. We can easily localize a small metastatic lymph node. This is spec CT of retroperitoneal neuroblastoma using iodine-123 MIBG as a radio tracer. In summary, ladies and gentlemen, New nuclear imaging modalities in oncology include PET-CT, PET-MRI, and SPEC-CT. The highlight technology is F18-FDG PET-CT, the usage of which is rapidly growing worldwide. New radio tracers for better molecular characterization, such as PSMA for prostate cancer, are coming. We are suffering from a global pandemic of COVID-19. Many medical professionals, including nuclear medicine physicians, are affected. These photos are nuclear medicine physicians who died of COVID-19. I pray for their rest in peace. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Please be safe and see you face to face next time. Hello? Hello, good evening, uh, Dr. Baum. Uh, good evening, Professor Santiago. It's nice to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. And uh, fortunately, you're, you're there in uh, your country and I'm here in my country, but anyway, it's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, well, thank you for that uh, lecture, uh, sir, and uh, about the current state of nuclear medicine. And uh, I agree that the, you know, there is underutilization, especially in the Philippines, of uh, nuclear medicine procedures. And uh, I think mainly because this is of, because of the price of the procedures. And, and, and the reason why it's expensive is not just because of the the, the, the scanners are expensive, but also because the rate of pharmaceuticals, you know, the consumables, which enable the scan to be done, is also very expensive. But anyway, uh, one of the first questions that have been uh, 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 sent to us, you know, to uh, for me to ask you is, uh, uh, will PET CT scan uh, diagnose bone marrow infiltration? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, so we now. So I, I must say that this is a kind of a booming uh, era for molecular imaging or nuclear medicine imaging. So we are using various radio pharmaceuticals, and uh, of course, we, because we are using radiation, we have uh, pros and cons. 
uh, but uh, anyway, we uh, have to find some uh, nice radio pharmaceuticals to use, in spite we have some kind of uh, uh, dose to bone marrow or uh, other organs. Uh, uh, so I, I think uh, the the beauty of our image is uh, targeting uh, only only cancer cells we can find. Uh, don't you agree, Professor Santiago? Yes, I agree, sir. Uh, so, uh, so I have a, a question from the audience uh, uh, to compare PET-CT and PET-MRI. Uh, PET-MRI is uh, uh, very useful in prostate cancer or uh, GI cancer, neuroendocrine tumors, but uh, mostly, especially in lung cancer, PET-CT is far better. So uh, it's time, and breast cancer, I think is uh, uh, similar. So uh, it's time for PET-CT in many countries. PET-MRI is still a kind of research-based, I think. Uh, do you see PET-MRI replacing PET-CT uh, in the next five years? Yes, of course. Uh, next five years, I definitely say PET-CT goes uh, further. And we have more uh, radio pharmaceuticals. So uh, nowadays we are using PET-CT for lung cancer, breast cancer, or lymphoma, but now we have more uh, things for prostate cancer and uh, other uh, tumors. And uh, moreover, we are going to theranostics. So I definitely, I say PET-CT goes further. Uh, but uh, I, I want to use spec city more than uh, nowadays. Uh, we have uh, nice spec city machines now, nowadays, so uh, I expect to use spec city more uh, from now on. For, for uh, um, brain metastasis, uh, uh, would you recommend? Uh, um, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, for brain metastasis, I'm using usually methionine for hepatocellular carcinoma, other agents. But uh, yeah, brain metastasis, uh, we need some more than FTG. Yeah, FTG is uh, has a limitation for brain imaging. And uh, would you use your uh, a PET CT or a PET MRI? Uh, so. So still, I'm using PET-CT, but with uh, methionine. But PET -MRI, so we also use a uh, uh, fused PET-MRI, but uh, so it, is, it takes time and uh, some limitations of that. Okay, I guess uh, Jason is uh, telling us that uh, our time is up. So uh, okay. thank you, Professor Baum. And, uh, Nice uh, chatting with you. I hope to see you next year. Okay, yeah. So bye.